okay students now today i'm going to explain the excess problems in current electricity right the first problem in current electricity is uh, 3.1 the storage battery of car of emf 12 volts okay one battery car battery its emf is 12 volts that we wrote here if the internal resistance of the battery is 0.4 ohms the battery has resistance the battery also offers some resistance for the flow of current the resistance offered by the battery is 0.4 ohm the question is that uh, how much maximum current that can be extracted from a battery how much current you can extract from the battery the battery is this is the battery whose emf is 12 volts and whose internal resistance is 0.4 ohm for ohm maximum how much current we can extract from this battery this is our question generally you know for example if any cell okay whose internal resistance is r if it is connected to some external resistance capital r we know the current formula in this circuit right anybody will you say the formula for the current in this circuit if we connect the cell to the external resistance cut the current formula is what total emf by total resistance total emf is what e total resistance is what yes nobody is not responding very good very good Ex internal resistance is smaller cap external resistance is capillar the total resistance is capillar plus smaller i want the maximum current to extract when you will get the maximum current for example you can reduce this capillar value external resistance we cannot reduce the resistance of battery we cannot change the resistance of the battery we can change the external circuit if capillar is zero if external circuit resistance is zero right the denominator term become minimum when denominator become minimum then the current become maximum is it correct yes or no then the maximum current formula that extracted from a battery is e by smaller understood yes or no e we got is uh, e, e they gave in the question 12 volts smaller they gave 0.4 if you divide both of them you will get the answer is 30 ampere this is the problem number 1 in current electricity third chapter right okay now let us go for the second question right in the middle of the second question yesterday we stopped now it's a continuation i am going to explain right what they gave in the question and what we have to find out in this you see here a battery of emf 10 volt internal resistance 3 ohm connected to a resistor if the current drawn in the circuit current in the circuit is 0.5 ampere what is the resistance of the resistor and what is the terminal voltage when the battery oh sorry when the what is the terminal voltage of battery when the circuit is closed this is our simple question what they gave in the question this is a battery right you see you follow the cursor this is a battery whose emf is 10 volt right whose internal resistance is what inside the battery the resistance is there smaller that is the battery internal resistance 3 ohm right and that is connected to some external resistance capital r right then in this moment the current passes through the circuit they gave as 0.5 ampere battery emf battery internal resistance current passes through the external resistance in the circuit when we connect the external resistance capillar right when we connect the uh, external resistance capillar to the battery the current flowing through the circuit is given as 0.5 ampere we should find out the capillar value for that we know current formula total emf by total resistance what is the total emf e what is the total resistance in the circuit capillar plus smaller right in this current value they give e value they give smaller value they give you have to find out the capillar we got it right and next what they are asking they are also asking the terminal voltage across the cell what is the terminal voltage across the cell we want the terminal voltage there is a formula for the terminal voltage across the cell the cell is discharging then the voltage across the cell formula is e minus ir or voltage across the cell is equal to voltage across the resistance then v is equal to ir also you can use there is no problem at all right v is equal to ir also you can use anyone you can use 
right if you simplify this what you will get i want a terminal voltage there are two formulas are there for the terminal voltage one is v is equal to e minus i r e is 10 minus i r some all the values we know we got uh, 8.5 volt size uh, terminal voltage there is another formula is there that is v is equal to i r what is i how much current passing right 0 0.5 what is r what is the capital r that we got in we find out it here capital r right that is a 17 right then we can use this formula also then if we use this one then we will get as v is equal to 1 by 2 into 17 we will get then if we simplify this we will get as 8.5 volts that means from this we can say that you can use any one of the formula to find out the terminal voltage one is e minus ir and other one is ir right uh, students now you can tell have you any doubt okay let us go for the third problem If you have any problem and any doubt in the solution, you can ask me immediately. This is our next problem, that is the 3.3. .3. What they are asking in this question, right? You read it properly, okay? There are three resistors. What are they? 1 ohm, 2 ohm and 3 ohm. Right? There are three resistors that are connected in the series. What is the total resistance of the combination? Right? These three resistors are connected in series. Very simple question and uh, that uh, even 10th class student can solve this problem. What they are asking? They are asking to find out the total resistance of the combination. Very simple. Right? Who will tell the formula for the total resistance? Kavita Pingua, you tell me. Total resistance in the series combination. What is the total resistance in the series combination? That is a question. First, A question. B question is asking if the combination is connected to battery of 12 volts. Okay, now this combination is connected to battery whose voltage is 12 volts. Right? With the negligible internal resistance. That means if internal resistance of the cell is neglected, zero. Then question is that question is that obtain the you read the question, second B question. If the combination is connected to a battery of EMF 12 volts, these three resistors combination connected to battery whose voltage is 12 volts and negligible internal resistance, obtain the potential difference across each resistor. We have to find out the potential difference across each resistor. In the series combination, potential divides, you know, na? potential difference across the first resistor V1, second V2, third V3, we can consider. The question is that we have to find out the V1 v2 and v3 simple question let's go for the a what is a yes anybody very good shukla rs is yes 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 rs is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 r1 is what 1 plus 2 plus 3 right that is 6 ohm is the answer right the B question, they are asking the potential difference across each resistor. There is some current passes in this circuit, right? The current extracted from the battery. In the series combination, the current will be same. The same current passes through each resistor, right? No? That current is I. I is passing. Then for that I, we can find out. How we can find out the I? I equal to V by R, you know? Total voltage by total resistance. Is it correct? Total voltage is 12 volts. The total resistance is V for 6. Then current how much you got here? Huh? 2 ampere. Then what they are asking in this question? First voltage across the first resistor, second resistor, third resistor we have to find out. V1 is equal formula what we write? Current into resistance, IR1 we write. What is I? What is I? Huh? 
2 r1 is what 1 how much you are getting the v1 2 volts next v2 they are asking v2 is the current into r2 potential difference across the second resistor potential difference across the second resistor potential difference across the second resistor means current through the second resistor into resistance i r2 then i is uh, what uh, 2 r2 is what 2 how much you are getting the potential 4 volt we are getting and v3 v3 is the potential across the third resistor current into r3 what is the current at here 2 ampere that is a fixed current a volt a resistance is what r3 3 how much you are getting the voltage 6 volts you see v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 is allowed now in the series combination total voltage is 12 volts that is divided across the three resistors okay across the first resistor 2 volt across the second resistor 4 volt across the third resistor 6 volt total if you will add 2 plus 4 6 6 plus 6 12 right total 12 volt that we are applying understood the solution is completed very simple it is even this type of problem you solved in the 10th class only is it correct students okay now let us go for the next question 3.4 we will go the 3.4 is also similar problem but they are asking for the parallel combination same problem but the parallel combination okay simple it is now let us see okay look at this there are three resistors 2 ohm 4 ohm 5 ohm are connected in parallel what is the total resistance of the combination simple it is that in the parallel combination what is the formula to find out the total resistance What is the formula to find out the total resistance? This is a parallel combination 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. Good. Look at this here, there are three resistors, right? We should write the values of them. That is R1 is solution i am going to explain for the problem r1 is 2 ohm r2 is 4 ohm r3 is 5 ohm what they are asking in our question if these three resistors connected in the parallel then their effective resistance we have to find out right rp effective resistance total resistance the second question they are asking that if the combination is connected to a battery of 20 volts, the combination is connected to battery of 20 volts. You see here, the parallel combination of three resistors is connected to a battery of 20 volts as shown in the figure. With the negligible internal resistance, we can take the internal resistance as zero. Okay. And this we can take as EMF also. There is not, not, not at all a problem. You can take it as EMF also or you can take it as voltage also. There is not at all problem. Okay. You can take anything, right? If you want, you can take it as EMF also. In question, they gave EMF. Right, what they are asking the question? The negligible return. Determine the current through each resistor. How much current passes through each and every resistor? There is a positive terminal, this one. From positive terminal, current will start. The current is coming to this point is I. And it will be splits that I1 current passes through R1. I2 current passes through R2 i3 passes through r3 right now right now their combination will go like this so oh, this is the thing and the next let us uh, see here what we want parallel effect resistance we have to find out right a question what is the formula for that very simple it is 1 by rp is equal 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. 
In our question, what they are asking in the second B question, they are asking the current through each resistor. I1 is equal to how much? I2 is equal to how much? I3 is equal to how much? In the parallel combination, current divides, but the potential will be same. Is it correct? You know very well these all things. And we have to simplify this 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5. We can do the LCM right here. How much LCM you will get? Can anyone? Hmm? I am asking the value of LCM. 20 now? Yes, 2, 10, 4, 5, 5, 4. What you are getting here? 1 by RP is equal to 19 by 20. We should write the reciprocal equation. We will get the RP is 20 by 19 ohm. We got the total resistance. <coughs> they are asking the current. Current through each resistor they are asking. Yes, how we can find out? I1, I1. I1 is equal to formula V by R1 according to the Ohm's law. Why we not write the V1, V2, V3? Because uh, potential is same in the parallel combination. Potential is 20 volt. V by R1 is what? 2. How much current we are getting here? Huh? 10 ampere. Is it correct? Then I2 I want to find out. I2 is equal to what? V by R2. V is 20. R2 value how much? 4. How much you are getting? 5 ampere. Is it correct? I3 is equal to V by R3. What is V8 here? 20. R3 is what? 5. What are you getting here? Huh? I1 plus I2 plus I3. Right? These are the currents through each resistor. If you want the total current, total current extracted from battery is how much? That is I. I is split into I1 and I2 and I3. They are not asking the total current, but simply we are finding. If you find this 10 plus 5 plus 4, how much you are getting here? 19 amperes we will get. Is it correct, students? Right. We can also find this one total current in another way also. Total voltage by total resistance or the total EMF by total resistance because total voltage equal total EMF only. Okay, because internal resistance is zero now. E minus IR we will take voltage, but R zero that's why V is equal to E only you will get. That is E by RP. What is EMF? 20. What is the total resistance? 20 by 19. How much current you will get? 19 ampere. In any way you can solve. There is no restriction. You can use any type, any method, right? You can find the current. Clear students the problem? Okay, let's go for the next one. Oh, we completed the four problems, right? Let us go for the fifth problem. Okay, this is our fifth problem. What they are asking in this? Let us go. Let us see here. At room temperature 27 degrees Celsius, right? At room temperature, how much? 27 degrees Celsius. The resistance of a material they gave is 100 ohm. If the temperature, what is the temperature of the element? If, if the resistance is found to be 117 ohm. The temperature coefficient of the material, right? Temperature coefficient of material is alpha. That is denoted with the alpha temperature coefficient degree Celsius inverse. Okay, this is the question, right? Very simple it is. One heating element has the resistance 100 ohm at a temperature 27 degree Celsius. 
The question is that at what temperature it has the resistance 117 ohm. 100 ohm resistance is at temperature 27 degree Celsius. At what temperature the resistance will become 117? Because resistance also depends upon temperature. Right? When temperature changes, the resistance also changes. When resistance changes, temperature changes. Temperature coefficient they gave, they are asking the temperature at which the resistance of a heater element, heating element is 117 ohm. What is the formula for the temperature coefficient of resistance? Alpha formula is what? Alpha formula is resistance change R2 minus R1 by R1 into T2 minus T1. This is the formula for the uh, alpha. In this we can substitute the values. What is alpha? 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 4 is the alpha. This is equal to R2 minus R1. That is 117 minus, what is it? Or we can do one thing. We want to find out the T2. Na. We take T2 minus T1 to left side and then we write another formula for that. T2 minus T1. Or in another step also you can do. There is no not at all a problem. We substitute directly. 1.7 into the power of minus 4 is equal to R2 minus R1. 117 minus 100 by R1 is the 100 into T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1 is the 27. And now we take the T2 we want to find out. We take the T2 to left side. T2 minus 27 to left side. 117 minus 100 means 17 you will get by 100 into this uh, 1.7 to the power of minus 4 taken to right side you will get like this right and we have to simplify this for the purpose you do one thing that uh, 117 this one 1.7 we write as 17 by 10 17 by 10 right now 17 by 10 the 10 goes to the numerator 17 into 10 by 100 into 17 into 10 to the power of minus 4 we will get and here 17 17 gets cancelled and the 0 0 gets cancelled 10 and 10 to the power of minus 4 you will get a 10 to the power of minus 3 right t2 minus 27 is equal to this 1 by 10 to the power of minus 3 you will get that is 10 to the power of 3 you will get that is t2 is equal to 10 to the power of 3 is the 1000 right plus 27 that is the temperature is 1027 degrees celsius Right, this is the answer. You see here, at 27 degree Celsius, the resistance is 100 ohm. In order to change the resistance of a heater, heating element from 100 to 117, you should heat, you should change the temperature from 27 to 1027. Right, clear students, solution? Okay, let us go for the next problem. This is our next problem 3.6. What they are asking in this question, let us see. A negligible small current passes through a wire of length 15 meters, cross sectional area 600 to the power of minus 7 meters square. Its resistance is measured to be 5 ohm. What is the resistivity of the material? Very simple question it is. Write the solution. Let us go for it. First, uh, write the uh, given values. Small current passes through a wire whose length is 15 meters. The wire length is 15 meters. And the wire cross section is 6 into 10 to the power of minus 7 meters square. The resistance of the wire is found to be 5 ohm. Then question is that what is the resistivity of material and what is the temperature coefficient of resistance? These are the, uh, what is, no, 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 what they are asking, what is the resistivity of material at that temperature? Simply they are asking the resistivity. You see here, the certain wire has the length 15 meters and cross section 16 to the power of minus 7 meters square. That wire has the resistance 5 ohm. Then what is its resistivity? That is our question. Yes, there is a formula for the resistivity. Yes, what is the formula? Anybody?
Don't know anybody. Right. That's also 10th class problem. Huh? Yes. One second, repeat. Rest of it is formula. Omjit. Huh? R A by L N S. Okay. Jaya, what is your answer? R A by L. Rho is equal to R A by L. Right. This is the simple formula. Right. R is phi. A they gave 6 into the power of minus 7. By L they gave 15. 5, 3, ja, 3, 2, ja. Then answer we got is 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 ohm meter. Completed solution? Simple it is, right now? Yes or no? Not opening the mouth. Okay, let us go for the next uh, solution. Three point seven. What they are asking in this question? It is also based on the temperature coefficient, right? Solution. A silver wire has a resistance two point one ohm at temperature twenty seven point five degrees Celsius. At a temperature twenty seven point five degrees Celsius, the resistance of the wire they gave is two point one ohm. The question: Resistance of 2.7 ohm at 100 degree celsius at 100 degree celsius the resistance is 2.7 ohm you see here at 27.5 degree celsius resistance is 2.1 at 100 degree celsius the resistance is 2.7 question is that determine the temperature coefficient of resistivity they are asking to find the alpha. Will you say alpha formula? R2 minus R1. Mm. Very good. R1 into T2 minus T1. R2 minus R1 by R1 into T2 minus T1. Now, you have to write all the values in this. In order to get the answer, it was very simple. That is a 2.7 minus 2.1 by R1 is the 2.1 into T2 minus T1. 100 minus 27.5. Okay, 2.7 minus 2.1 means you will get a is 0.6 is it correct by 2.1 into 100 minus 27.5 how much you will get <clears throat> Point 0.5 okay 99 9 minus 7 2 Is it correct, students? Hmm? Don't know anything. Yes, na? Yourself, you can simplify. You will, you will get answer. You should get the zero point double zero three nine degree celsius inverse or the per degree celsius you will get you can simplify and check whether you are getting or not let's go for the next uh, question the next question is that uh, 3.8 
Okay, this is our next question. Three point eight. What they are asking in this question? Hmm. Okay, you see here heat a heating element using nichrome. Okay, a heating element using nichrome connected to a 230 volt supply drawn initial current of 3.2 ampere which settles a few seconds steady current 2.8 ampere. What is the steady temperature? Steady temperature of the heating element if the room temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. The temperature coefficient of the nichrome wire averaged. Uh, over the temperature range involved 1.7 uh, power of minus 4 degree Celsius per degree Celsius. Okay, it was very simple. Heating element using nichrome wire connected to a battery, battery 230 volts. We are connecting to a battery 230 volts. What we are connecting? Nichrome wire we are connecting. At that moment, through the nichrome wire, the initial current is 3.2 ampere starting current. And the starting temperature is the 27 degrees Celsius. At room temperature 27 degrees Celsius, the current through the wire is 3.2 ampere. And after certain temperature, right? After certain temperature, the current will become current will become steady and that will become the 2.8 amperes. Then at what temperature like that happens? This is our question. Right, uh, you see here supplies draws initial current 3.2 ampere which settles after few seconds a steady value 2.8 amperes. After some time at certain temperature the current will become 2.8 ampere. Right, at what temperature it will happen? This is our question. And the temperature coefficient they gave is 1.7 into 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 4 per degree Celsius or degree Celsius inverse. This is our question. I think you can solve this problem. Okay, very simple. It is also based on the alpha formula only, but they not give the R1, R2 initial resistance of the nichrome wire and final resistance of the nichrome wire. Right? The heating element using nichrome, first nichrome wire is connected to 30 volts, draws initial current 3.2 amperes, starting current is 3.2 amperes. Which settles after few seconds. After some time, the current will become 2.8 amperes. What is the steady temperature? Right after this is the steady current, final current. Then steady temperature is what? Steady temperature. Steady temperature means final temperature. 2.8 ampere they gave a steady current corresponding to that temperature is what? The temperature is the steady temperature. And the starting initial room temperature is 27 degree Celsius. Initial room temperature is 27 degree Celsius. Initial current is 3.2 amperes. Okay. When the nichrome wire is connected to battery 230 volts, initial current is 3.2 ampere at a temperature 27 degree Celsius. After few seconds, the current will reach to steady 2.8 amperes. That steady temperature is what? The alpha they give is 1.7 to the power of minus 4 per degree Celsius. Then, how to solve this problem? We should require to find out the initial resistance and we should require to find out the final resistance. How we can find out the initial resistance? We have to use the Ohm's law R is equal to V by I, R1 is equal to V by I1, P is the 230 by I1 is the 3.2, right? R2 is the V by I2, V by I2, V is the 230 by I2 is the 2.2. 8 ampere. We got R1 and R2 and alpha. Then we should find out the theta. Theta T2 is the final temperature. Alpha formula we have R2 minus R1 by R1 into by R1 into T2 minus T1. This is the simple solution for the problem. R1 
R1 into T2 minus T1. What we have to do in this? All the values you know except T2. You substitute and you can find the T2 value yourself. Okay. Right. Let understood students. Okay. Let us go for the next problem. Okay, 3.8. After 3.8, I am starting the 3.10. Okay, I left the 3.9. It is somewhat lengthy problem. I, it takes time. Okay, I will complete the 3.10 first. What is this problem and what we have to do? How to find out the solution? This is very important uh, problem regarding the meter bridge or the potentiometer problems. Meter bridge and potentiometer problems are very important. What they are asking? Those who joined lately, you write your roll numbers in the chat box. Okay, attendance is very important. So, the so many members, uh, students left the class after giving the attendance. Okay, 27 members only present. But the attendance gave by the more than 30 members. 4 5 members left the class. Not at all good this one. Okay. Right, okay. In meter pitch, uh, the balancing point is found to be 39.5 centimeters from end A. You know the diagram of the meter bits, right? This is our meter bits. Right now? A meter bits, the balancing point, this is A point and this is B point. Here some resistance X connected. Okay. Here some resistance Y connected in the two gaps. Okay. In from the middle one galvanometer. This galvanometer is connected to some jockey. Right. And the both ends connected to one battery lucky this is our meter bit you know very well yes uh, the from this is the balancing length right and the total left side length is l total length is 100 centimeters between a b manganese wire is there that's length is 100 centimeters this left side length is l centimeters means then what about the right side length huh? Students, 100 minus L. Is it correct? Okay, first A question is what? What is this? In a meter bridge, figure 3.27. Okay, they not give the figure in this. Figure 3.27 means we can go for the 3.27. Okay. I will copy the diagram. This is the diagram that they gave in the question, okay, right. The same diagram that I done, right, no difference. What's our question? In a meter bridge, in a meter bridge, Balancing point found to be 39.5 centimeters from end A. When a resistor 
y is 12.5 ohm determine the value of x very simple question it is simple means very simple right what they are asking in the solution in the question just you should know the basic formula for this when the resistance in the right gap y this y value they gave us 12.5 at that moment the balancing length they gave us 13.5 cm from left end from a point the balancing point uh, distance from left end a they gave that is the 39.5 cm that is called the balancing length balancing length corresponding to the value of y 12.5 they gave okay question i will write y value they gave is a question y value they gave is 12.5 ohm okay at that moment the balancing length they gave is 39.5 cm the question is that uh, corresponding to the that left side resistance is how much simple it is you see here right side value of resistance they gave balancing length they gave you should follow the cursor at y value they gave and balancing length they gave they are asking the left side resistance right what is the formula that we have to use it here anybody knows anybody knows the formula just it is just like a p by q equal to r by s you have to use like this left side resistance x by right side resistance y is equal to left side length l by right side length 100 minus l you will get the x formula as y into l by 100 minus l this formula also i said uh, during the explanation of theory that x is equal to i said r into some or r is equal to we know left side resistance we consider as r right side resistance we consider as s r is equal to s into l by 100 minus l formula we got left side resistance r by right side resistance s r by s is equal to left side length l by right side length 100 minus l you will get this formula rs is equal to r is equal to s into l by 100 minus l you substitute all values y is 12.5 l value is 39.5 100 minus l 100 minus 39.5 you have to simplify it that is the 12.5 into what we have to do it here we have to uh, subtract it and we have to simplify how much you will get 39.5 by 100 minus 39.5 100 minus we take the point of 5 you will get here uh, this is 0 right uh, this is 60 is it correct students now we have to simplify it some more and we can find out the x value uh, i'm not going to simplify it because you know very well because you are not lkg students and you can simplify yourself i am giving the answer directly the answer you will get is uh, 8.2 ohms 8.2 ohms okay Right. let us go for the b question in a they are asking to find out the value of x right and next they are asking why are the connections between the resistors in a resistor bridge or meter bridge made with the thick copper strips you see here there are connections are made with the thick copper strips why there are copper strips we are using that this is l shaped copper strip l shaped copper strips why we are using the copper strips that are they are asking in the a question a question they are also asking why you are using the copper strips in the connections can anyone can answer will you answer huh? copper strips have less resistance okay they have less resistance right their area is more and the copper is a good conductor that's why their resistance is less copper strips have less resistance hence they are used in ice connecting wires okay hence they are used in connections right very simple it is then what is the b question what is the b question let's go for the b question determine the balancing point if x and y are interchanged can you tell if you interchange the resistances in the left and right gaps then what happens to the balancing length 
the original balancing length is 39.5 what is the new balancing length after interchanging the resistances x and y in the gaps after interchanging the x and y after interchanging the resistances new balancing length new balancing length students what happened you are not telling anything baby mata is there not responding anything huh Snehalata is there simply writing the notes and formulas not by hurting anything you don't know this formula if we interchange the resistances in the left and right gap of meter bridge then the new balancing length is 100 minus l 100 minus l l is the old balancing length old balancing length is 39.5 centimeters 100 minus 39.5 how much you will get 60.5 hmm I think it is wrong. Is it correct? Mm, right, right, right answer. Okay. Next, C question. What happens if the galvanometer and cell interchange? You see here, galvanometer is at here, cell is at here. If you interchange them, then what happens to the balancing point? What would the galvanometer show any current? What happens to the what happens if the galvanometer and cell interchanged at the balancing point? At balancing point means the galvanometer shows the zero deflection. At that moment you interchange the cell and the galvanometer. You change the galvanometer to cell location, cell to galvanometer location. Is there any change? Is there any difference? You find out. What happens if the galvanometer and cell interchange at the balancing point of the bitter bridge? What would be the what would the galvanometer show any current? Answer if we interchange. Resistance, sorry, 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 sorry. What is the galvanometer and cell? There is no change in balancing length. There is no change in balancing point or the balancing length. Previously, balancing length, how much it is there? Now, also, that much only there. There is no change in balancing length. Second question. What they are asking? Have you found any reading in the galvanometer? No. Galvanometer show no current through the galvanometer. Is there any current that passes through a galvanometer at balancing length? At balancing point, no current through the galvanometer after interchange also. This is our next problem 3.10. Completed. Students, tell me any doubt in this solution? Okay. Uh, some more problems are there and four problems left. You may solve that are very important. Okay. Last problem, potentiometer 3.12 is very important. We completed the 3.10 only. Okay. We will stop today lecture. Continue in next class. Okay. Any doubts?